Well, good afternoon and welcome to Second Presbyterian Church. This is awesome to have this good crowd here. We are thrilled. I'm Rick Black, organist and music director here at the church. I want to welcome you on this wonderful fall day. It's not very bright outside, but it sure is bright in here with all your all you folks. A uh, couple things I want to mention that are upcoming here. Um, you know, Thad Claggett's been here a couple times, and he says, Rick, I want to hear that organ bark and belch. Well, Thad, next Sunday is our Kirkin of the Tartan service, where this uh, Latin Shrine Pipe and Drum Band will be here, and I will be p trying to play against them. So, folks, if you want to come hear this, this instrument back here, you want to hear it roll out, be here next Sunday at 10 o'clock, and it's, it's a great service. Uh, another event coming up, we're not that far from Christmas. As I'm sure you're aware of that. December 2nd, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock, December 2nd, is our annual Christmas carol sing-along, and we will have uh, choirs from Licking Valley and Heath High Schools for that. Uh, and then December 7th is the annual Sights and Sounds tour, walking tour of the Newark Downtown Churches. And I am very honored that Olivia will be joining me for our segment of that this year. That's uh, Thursday evening, December 7th, we will be doing uh, organ and duet Christmas music or organ and harp duet Christmas music I'm sorry but uh, we're looking forward to that and the music for that will start about 530 we are the first stop on the tour so uh, we'll start playing about 530 and the official program starts at 6 you get a chance to visit all the churches downtown for that uh, there's a reception this afternoon so be sure and stop down in the dining room, Olivia will be down there, and her, Sophia will be down there to greet you, and you can talk with them and chat with them afterwards. With that, I'm going to turn the program over to Olivia. It's all yours.
There we go. That was my favorite piece, so y'all can go home now, because <laughs> seriously, that piece has meant a lot to me for several years now. Um, I've told some of you that I've been planning on this concert for a year, and if you ask that it took me a year to learn that piece, <laughs> very funny. Talk about three to four years, really, to truly master a piece like that. Um, and I love it. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that process later. Um, first of all, today, thank you all for being here. You just make me smile. Um, this week has been a very difficult week, and um, the number of people that have texted me, called me, messaged me, and said, sorry, I can't make it. I was like, okay, all right. We're going to have three people there, but we're going to have fun. And uh, you guys showed up in force anyway, so I'm very, very blessed and um, privileged to be here today. Thank you to Rick Black and to the whole Second Presbyterian Church for having me and my sister play here today. Um, it's an honor, really, truly an honor to share music and the gift that it truly is with the people that you love. If you do not know me, my name is Olivia, and I feel like I know almost everybody in here. How many of you know me from Plaza Pizza? Let's be honest here. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people here from Plaza, which I love. Um, Plaza is a fun part of my harp journey, even though that doesn't make much sense. Those of you who know me best, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, <laughs> she's really going to bite my head off later for this, but um, I'm going to embarrass somebody this morning or this afternoon very quickly, and um, I'll ask for forgiveness later. <laughs> Rosalind, can you stand up for a minute? Come on, stand up. Come on, turn around. <laughs> this is my sister Rosalind. <laughs> she won't say standing. My sister Rosalind down here, um, she deserves a big, big, big thank you. Because to be honest, um, when I took over Plaza Pizza out in Heath, um, there was really no way for me to continue my musical education without her. And um, I'm probably going to cry. Um, if it were not for her help every single week, her good attitude, her love and devotion for our family and for what we need um, from each other, there is no possible way I would be sitting up here. Even Sophia would not be up here today. So she deserves a major, major round of applause. I also need to thank my videographers who put up that lovely video that you saw just before um, we started today. Uh, they worked tirelessly to make that happen. In fact, it landed in my inbox at 6.30 this morning. So um, it takes teamwork to make the dream work, and that was a dream come true. So if you want to hear the story about that later, come, come talk to me. It's a, it was a God story from every angle. So I hope you enjoyed it. All right couple of quick announcements here. In the back, there's a guest book. Hopefully most of you saw it and were filtered over there to sign it. Please, please, please write your names down. Let me know that you are here because I'm not going to be able to talk to you all, I'm sure. And I want you to know that I, I love that you came today. And um, write your comments, your snide remarks. I don't really care. Write whatever you want. Just let me know that you are here. Um, then the last announcement I want to make is... Uh, I don't like to make these kind of announcements, but I'll do it just because it's the way of the world right now. If you are not following me on social media, please do so. Um, look up Olivia Claggett, Olivia Sharon Valley. It'll put you there, Instagram and Facebook. Um, my promise to you is that no matter what, it will always be 100% positive, 100% uplifting, God-honoring, because I don't see any place for negativity online. So... If you need a little positivity in your life and a few smiles, then hop on there, follow me, and we can enjoy this journey of music together. So, um, I promised you all a very special afternoon today. And really, that's not possible with me or my sister or Rick. It's all God. He is the one who has given us this gift of music, and he's given us this incredible journey of life that we are all on. You know, we, um, 
We take life for granted a lot. We really do. Think about it. You woke up today and you got ready for your day, you got dressed, you had your coffee, whatever, and you came here and you're fine, you're breathing. But did you thank the Lord for it? Did you let him know that it means a lot that you're here, that you're alive, that you're breathing, that you're on this beautiful planet that he gave us to live on? Think about it. It means a lot that he chose for us to be here and even more specifically here in this very room at this very moment. Those of you who are here are here for a reason, and I hope that God will show you that reason as we go along today. I also promised you that there were some surprises. Video was number one surprise. Number two surprise is I'm getting married. Just kidding, I'm not getting married. Those of you who know me really well, you tease me an awful lot about that, but there's no ring on this hand, and uh, will not be, but um, no, I'm not getting married. And no, I'm not quitting Plaza, so that's the other thing. Just get that out of the room. That's not going to happen. Um, but all I know is this, and I'm going to read this to you because I have a lot on my mind today, and if I were to truly give you my whole heart, we would be here until 9 o'clock tonight. Don't want to do that to you. So... For weeks and even months now, God has been preparing my heart and ordering my steps in incredible ways. Looking back at letters I've written to my mom over this year and the unique circumstances and challenges, I can see his hand in every single moment. All of those moments were leading and pointing me to today. We're all going to laugh and to cry, I can promise you that. Some of you are what a good friend of mine would call surface dwellers. You're generally just sticking to the basic facts of life and the everyday ups and downs. But others of you are a little bit more like me. You kind of like to dig down deep to get in the weeds and kind of ruminate there a little bit. And you like to think about problems and what are interesting ways that we can solve those problems. And sometimes there's difficult questions in life where you have to get down there. You have to get under the surface. You have to truly learn about the people that surround your life and your seasons. But today, I'm asking that all of you, whether you're a surface dweller or not, get below the surface with me. And you've seen the title on your program. If you don't have a program, run to the back and get one. You'll need it. Um, This program was put together by Michael Mayer and I am beyond thankful for his design work, for his dedication to pulling out exactly what I wanted in this program. Um, It's got several elements in it that are symbolic, which I'll be explaining later, Um, but keep that program handy while we're going today. I only wish I had time to tell you what it was that completely inspired me in forming this program. But I will tell you this, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 4 says this, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. And when God brought that scripture to my mind, everything about this afternoon clicked into place. It was perfect. And speaking of that, those of you who have been to anything I play and speak for know that dedicating events like this to special people in my life is incredibly important. First and foremost, I play to bring honor and glory to my creator. I wouldn't be here without him, without him holding my hands, without him leading me through this wonderful thing that we call life. And of course, I play for the two people who have made it possible to learn this beautiful instrument and to live out this passion of mine that I've carried around since I was three years old. Mom and Dad, I will always be grateful for every sacrifice you've ever made so that I can play the harp and it could be a huge part of my life. But today, ultimately, this concert is for Candace, the woman who has poured her time, positive energy, ideas, expertise, love, and commitment into my harp journey more than anyone else on this planet. On Wednesday, we celebrate, my harp teacher and I, we celebrate what we like to call our Harper anniversary. And that is the date that I first sat down behind a harp, and I'll be honest, I fell head over heels in love with it. 
I've never loved anything more. And that day, October 18th of 2007, was the beginning of a journey that I've never regretted in any way. And um, this year marks a sweet 16 for that. Um, we, <laughs> I cannot believe it's been 16 years since I first sat down behind a harp, but they have been the best years of my life, and it's for her. While I was preparing for today, the inspiration came from so many different outlets and sources that it started overwhelming my mind. I was constantly in a state of like deer in the headlights look because I had so many things coming to me. It was conversations with several of you in here today. It was places I went. I got to go to Europe this spring and I saw England and Norway and I got to explore some of those places just completely by myself, just walk around in England and Norway and hobnob, I guess. Um, it was just wonderful. I loved every moment of that and it inspired me in so many ways. If I had to put my entire year since I last stood up here in last October into one word, the word would be overwhelming. And I don't mean overwhelming in a horrible, stressful, terrible way. I mean it in the best way possible. Completely full of God moments. Every single day, there was not a day that went by that I wasn't shocked by his goodness and his love, his grace, his mercy. All of it, just working together, forming this crazy pattern in my mind that finally all came out in the last two weeks when I was typing all of this up. Um, I've been overwhelmed by the beauty of life, by the unique seasons that God places us in, by the musical nuances that accompany our life songs, and by the special dances he has for each of our lives. And so here's my big point for today. When we still had a Hallmark store in town, we were there a lot. My mom is a giver, and we frequently went there to buy cards and gifts. I spent a lot of my childhood in the Hallmark store. <laughs> On one such occasion, my older sister, Elizabeth, found a book entitled Dance While You Can, and its subtitle, Gentle Reminders to Help You Live Life to the Fullest. It was written by Lance Wubbles, I was only about nine years old when that book came to our house, and I didn't know why then, but it's gentle reminders about living life to the absolute fullest totally gripped my heart. I loved sitting down to read those words, and now, 15 years later, it all started coming together in my mind. This year, after all of these conversations, after the trip to Europe, after learning about the energy that flows through each one of us and connects us to people along our paths, talking about light and the light of who Jesus truly is inside of us, dancing to our life songs and finding the rhythms that fit who we were created to be, there was nothing else today's concert could be titled. At the beginning of this special little book is a short piece by an unknown author, and I feel compelled to show it to read it to you today. It says this. First, I was dying to finish high school and start college. And then I was dying to finish college and start working. And then I was dying to marry and have children. And then I was dying for my children to grow old enough so I could get back to my career. And then I was dying to retire. And now I am dying and I realized that I forgot to live. Wow. What did that just do to you? Since I was very young, those words have literally crushed my spirit every time I read them. How can someone get to the end of their life and realize, oh my goodness, I never lived. I never danced in the rain. I never even splashed in a few puddles. I just existed. Oh. That crushes my very being. I pray that I never, never get to the end of my life and end up saying that, and that none of you say that. While it makes my heart ache, it also inspires me and propels me forward. As this book says, he is the Lord of the dance, always ready and willing to teach us the steps if we will but listen. It is my sincerest desire that this collection of tunes most of which are dances of one kind or another, will inspire you to reflect on your own dance, 
your own season. Wherever he has placed you, he has new steps to add to your dance and new rhythms to add to your songs. We must listen carefully, for some seasons require a more intricate dance or a more careful listening to the music. But he is also the conductor of that music, never wavering in his steady and compassionate way of producing in us the character traits and developing in us the gifts we were always meant to share with others. My next set of tunes today is <laughs> a fun set, so we can quit sniffling for a minute. And um, I want to dedicate it to a special group of people. You'll see underneath in their program it says Dances Daltum 1, 2, and 3. Um, Andres is a wonderful composer. I absolutely love his stuff. And I was putting all of this together and realizing, oh yes, there is only one group of people that this can be for because when we're at Plaza, we dance around each other all the time. It's a constant shuffling around each other, trying not to drop pizzas, which I have done recently. Um, it's just a, it's a fun dance, especially on Friday nights. And if you want a job to do, come see me, I'm hiring. I can uh, show you how to do the plaza dance. But dances one, two, and three, I'm just gonna play back to back. You can clap if you want, but these are just a fun intro into the dances that you'll hear today. And they are first and foremost for my plaza crew. They are a huge part of my world and I appreciate them so very much.
I get to have my sister here with me, and it's an incredible joy to have a built-in duo partner at your house. It's wonderful. You see the three harps sitting up here today. You can come on up, Sophie. And um, yes, it kind of fills up that one room in the house, and I don't know really how mom feels about it, but <laughs> when she's vacuuming around them and it's really annoying, I think she actually likes it, though. And um, this built-in duo partner who I refer to online as Sidekick, uh, Sophia, um, she's, she's just a little joy bug, really. And I'm thrilled to have her here today to play some duos. But first, she's going to play a very special solo for you. This piece, She Begs You More and Carolyn's Concerto, was arranged by our teacher, Candice. And Sophia took first place in state competition this year with it. And so I just think that I need to show her off a little bit. So, Sophie, this one's all yours.
much fun to watch somebody else just get into a piece that they love. I just, ugh. every time she plays that, I'm like, oh, I want to play it with you because <laughs> it's such a fun piece. Well, um, we're going to turn it just a little bit out of the fun category. Rick, are you ready? Um, this next piece really has been a special piece to me my whole life. I've just loved the lyrics to Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And you know what really bothers me is I love the tune, but I hate the fact that it says, come thou fount of every blessing, and there's no comma, like it should be, because we're asking him to come to us. Come, he is the fount of every blessing. He has it all in him. And when you change your perspective a little bit and you kind of insert that comma where it belongs, it changes the way you think about the lyrics to this song. My favorite verse is number four, and it says this, Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. That was a lot right there in that first line. How great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. And then I think my favorite part for us nowadays, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. We've got things coming out our ears, the things to do, don't we? We got this, and by the time we get to the end of the day, you're like, do I even think about Jesus today? I don't know. Ask yourself. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Oh, ouch. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. This particular arrangement by Rhett Barnwell is excellent. It's very beautiful and very moving. So I'm going to get up here with Rick, who is going to try not to overpower the harp with his pipes.
anybody want to donate a harp to this church so I can just come in here and practice with Rick all the time? <laughs> I absolutely love the fact that I have people in my life who love to collaborate. And when Rick asked me a year and a half ago to do the first one of these concerts last October, I was like, oh, this is exciting. And I'm an idea person, so the ideas started coming like crazy. And then for this year, even more so. I love, love, love being able to play with an organist. So thank you, Rick. All right. Um, I have a story to tell you. And uh, then I'm going to get down here on the floor and do a more formal story. So listen up. About 15 years ago, my sister was a senior in high school, and <laughs> she is a little bit more, um, how do I put this? She's just not, she does not like to be in the public eye. Let's just say that. <laughs> does not like to be up in front of people, and she's like, oh, don't, don't do that to me. I, on the other hand, as you can tell, I love to be in front of an audience. I love the energy that comes from it, and um, it's fun to be a performer. That's not her gift, however, that's what she thought. Um, she was in speech class, and she was required to give a speech in public for competition, and she was not too happy about it. But she picked a lovely piece, and um, I was only, what, eight years old at the time when she first started working on it, and I got to listen to her practice, and I loved it. And the piece that she picked, I don't know why, it just really sank down deep as an eight-year-old. Well, we get to competition, and take it back 15 years, Sidekick is only a year old. So we get to competition, and guess who has to sit out in the hallway and miss the speech? I did. I had to miss her performance, and she won that. She was one point from a perfect score from the judges. It was an absolutely phenomenal performance, so I hear. Well, <laughs> just a year later, she had already graduated, but it was my turn to give a speech, and I asked her, I said, will you please give me help since you were in speech class? And she said, well, yes, I can do that, but we have to go out in the woods. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you're kind of well, but okay, we'll do it. So we get out in the woods, and there was a particular line in the address that I was to give, and it, it said that there was a dappled brilliance of green and gold. And that was the line, that was the reason she said, let's go outside, let's see it. Let's experience that dappled brilliance of green and gold. I want you to see it with your eyes so that when you convey that to your audience, they can see what you see. So I got that as a fourth grader. I'm like, okay, got that trick in my back pocket. Well, over the years, her poem that she had given always stuck with me. I wanted to give it in public so badly, so badly. And I get to my junior and senior years of high school, and it was my last two chances, and I had to say no. It was for competition. There was too much going on. I could not physically handle one more thing. I was already doing harp solos for competition, and there just there wasn't anything left. So I had to say, OK, maybe someday I can give that to an audience. Maybe someday I can touch somebody's heart with those words. So I put it away. A couple years ago, Rick over here contacted me and said, do you want to do a program? And I said, absolutely. But this poem didn't, it didn't fit last year's concert. It just didn't feel right. But this year, unbeknownst to all of you, including my parents, this poem was the inspiration for the entire concert today. And it is, in part, because it talks about the seasons of life. Don't take them for granted. Don't take those hard ones for granted. If it hurts you, it's still okay. If it's a joyful season, it's okay. You know what? All of them are going to change, so enjoy them while they're there. But when you get to the end of your life, just like Lance Wubble says in his book, dance while you can. Say, I love you while you can. Say, I forgive you while I can. Those words, don't take your life for granted. Don't take those seasons for granted. This poem I'm about to give you, it's gripping. I'm hoping I can get through it. You guys can cry all you want. I'm hoping I can get through it, though. And though this is not a piece of music, 
It is the reason I'm here today. When I went overseas in May, um, I got to see some phenomenal cathedrals. In your program, if you open it up, there's a mirrored image in there. The background is the mirrored image of Salisbury Cathedral. And I think, I think one of my friends from England is listening right now on the live stream. I hope he is. Um, Salisbury Cathedral is absolutely magnificent. It's stunning to walk in there and realize I'm not even as tall as the door handle. Oh, whoa, this place is massive. It was built over 38 years uh, by dedicated craftsmen. Its foundation is only four feet deep because they actually moved the cathedral, and it sits in a floodplain. And yet, they have had experts over the years come and look at it, and it's not fallen down. So if you have a chance, go see it. But that cathedral is in the inside of your program, and then if you go to the back side of your program, there's a picture of the one side of the cathedral um, from when I was there. But there's a line in this poem, too, just like the other speech, this one I needed to see. The thing I needed to see were vast cathedral arches. I needed to see and to gaze in literal astonishment at how beautiful some of these places were. I saw several cathedrals. This was my favorite. Um, but this, these vast cathedral arches, you understand when I give you the poem, the trees that are inside of your program. You ever been outside before and you remembered that the trees create a cathedral too? When I decided that I was going to memorize this poem, I didn't have a lot of time. I'm a busy person and I knew I needed to multitask. I love to walk. It's a good workout and um, clears your mind. So every day this spring, I would go out on a walk in the woods unbeknownst to anybody except for my sisters who wondered constantly what I was doing. And I had something in my pocket and I didn't tell anybody what it was. And when I went to England, I had just about finished memorizing it. It was just about right. Came back from England and I finished memorizing it and I stuck it in my pocket one afternoon and I put my clothes in the wash didn't even think about it. And that night, my mom said, somebody put something through the washer that really shouldn't have been in there. And I was like, oh no, I know exactly what that is. It's a good thing I finished memorizing it. But instead of them kind of just letting me off, my mom and sister said, oh, who you been meeting out in the woods? <laughs> Guys, no, it's not a love letter. So in a way, it is a love letter to you today. I didn't write it but I hope that you enjoy what is called the legend of the organ builder. The Legend of the Organ Builder by Julia Ripley Dorr. Day by day, the organ builder in his lonely chamber wrought. Day by day, the soft air trembled to the music of his thought. Till at last the work was ended and no organ voice so grand ever yet had soared responsive to the master's magic hand. Aye, so rarely was it builded that whenever groom and bride who in God's sight were well-pleasing in the church stood side by side without touch or breath, the organ of itself began to play and the very airs of heaven through soft gloom seemed to stray. He was young, the organ builder, and o'er all the land his fame ran with fleet and eager footsteps, like a swiftly rushing flame. All the maidens heard the story. All the maidens blushed and smiled. By his youth and wondrous beauty, and his great renown beguiled, 
So he sought and won the fairest, and the wedding day was set. Happy day, the brightest jewel in the glad year's coronet. But when they the portal entered, he forgot his lovely bride, forgot his love, forgot his God, and his heart swelled high with pride. Ah, oh, thought he, how great a master am I! When the organ plays, how the vast cathedral arches will re-echo with my praise. But he listened, 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 without thought of love or prayer, for the swelling notes of triumph from his organ standing there. All was silent. Nothing heard he, save the priest's low monotone and the bride's robe trailing softly or the floor of fretted stone. Then his lips grew white with anger. Surely God was pleased with him who built the organ for his temple vast and dim. Who's the fault then? Hers, the maiden standing meekly at his side, flamed his jealous rage, maintaining she was false to him, his bride. Vain were all her protests, vain her innocence and truth. On that very night, he left her to her anguish and her ruth. Far he wandered into a country wherein no man knew his name. For ten weary years he dwelt there, nursing still his wrath and shame. Then his haughty heart grew softer, and he thought by night and day of the bride he had deserted, till he hardly dared to pray thought of her, a spotless maiden, fair and beautiful and good. Thought of his relentless anger that had cursed her womanhood. Till at last, his yearning grief and penitence were all complete, and he longed with bitter longing just to fall down at her feet. Oh, how throbbed his heart when after many a weary day and night rose his native towers before him with the sunset glow alight. Through the gates into the city on he pressed with eager tread. There he met a long procession, mourners following the dead. Why weep ye so, good people? And whom bury ye today? Why do yonder sorrowing maidens scatter flowers along the way? Has some saint gone up to heaven? Yes, they answered weeping sore. For the organ builder's saintly wife, our eyes shall see no more. No one knew him. No one knew him when he cried out, white with pain. No one questioned when with pallid lips he poured his tears like rain. Tis someone whom she has comforted who mourns with us, they said, as he made his way unchallenged and bore the coffin's head. Bore it through the open portal, bore it up the echoing aisle. Let it down before the altar where the lights still burned clear the while. When, oh, hark, the wondrous organ of itself began to play, strains of rare, unearthly sweetness, never heard until that day. And ere yet the strain was ended, he who bore the coffin's head with a smile 
of one forgiven. Gently sank beside it, dead. They who raised the body knew him, and they laid him by his bride. Down the aisle and o'er the threshold, they were carried side by side, while the organ played a dirge that no man ever heard before, and then softly sank to silence. Silence kept forevermore. I did not mention this before, but that one was specifically for my mom and my sister, um, for obvious reasons. That one really makes you think. Um, and this next part's gonna make you think a little bit more. I told you, you gotta get down deep when you're talking to me. The next piece I'm going to play for you is a very special piece. I'm playing it today for my dad. Um, he used to sing this song in church a lot. In fact, he was gonna sing it this morning in church but woke up not feeling quite like that would be great, so maybe I'll get to hear his voice sing it another week instead. The Sands of Time Are Sinking. It's a very, very old hymn, not well known, and so I've included it in your program today. I encourage you to read the words while I'm playing. Don't pay attention to me. That's frivolous. No, not important. The words are important. Especially here in verse 3. O oh Christ, he is the fountain, the deep, sweet well of love. The streams on earth I've tasted, more deep I'll drink above. And my favorite part, there to an ocean fullness, his mercy doth expand. Wow, his mercy is never ending. And glory, glory dwelleth in Emmanuel's land. We don't know how much sand is left in the glass for each of us. We don't know how many seasons we have left. Some of us have more than others, but we truly never know. Again, don't take it for granted. Whatever season you're in, whatever dance you're dancing to right now, love it. Lean into it. Try to understand it. Talk to people who are going to uplift you, encourage you. Be that person for someone else. Be that light that he has called us to be. The sands of time are sinking. Please read it while I play this for you.
told you we were going to laugh and cry today. You got me going. Um, the next piece is another special one. I can't help but make connections when I play through music. And I need to get my notes back out here because I'm going to forget what I'm going to say about this one. It's important. Um, hang on just a second here. Let me turn this back over. <laughs> um, some, some people have a way of coming into your life, and when they do, you immediately just click. Isn't that the best feeling in the world? When you meet someone and your energy collides and it creates an amazing thing for both of you. Um, I'm talking about friendships here specifically, but that can be, you know, your spouse, love at first sight. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but some of you I think would tell me it is. I think my dad might say that. Um, but some people are just extra special. Their light just, like, illuminates the entire room when they walk in, and you just love being around them. There are so many of you in this room that just have a light, just a really special light inside of you, and I love it. I love being around you. But there's one person in particular in here that came to mind when I was putting all this program together. I really thought originally that I wanted to do this program for friends. That was just kind of my first thought. And then it changed and morphed into what I've been telling you about all along. But today, this next piece, this canon of peace, which is just a stunning piece of music um, by Marie Strong. This canon of peace is for Julie. Um, she's sitting back there and glowing. I can see it. And um, her friendship to me means the world. She walked into my pizza shop, and it was just friendship at first sight. It really was. And the, the moment we decided to talk to each other more than just, hey, here's your pizza, we discovered that our passions were similar, our love for our Savior was similar. And really, I think that's what drew me to her in the first place. The light of our Savior just comes out of her. So Julie, this one is for you. Um, some of the others I'm playing for today are not here, but I'm thrilled to be able to play this for you in person.
Okay, the next one I think has actually become our favorite part of this entire program, and I was told that I'm allowed to tell this story, so I'm going to. Originally, I was a little nervous about it, but I got permission. So, um, Sophia, you can come on back up. Sophia has known this piece for quite a while. Um, it was part of her lessons. It's called King of the Fairies, and it's a very traditional Irish hornpipe song, and it's absolutely so much fun to play. It's an absolute blast. But we couldn't both play the same part, and um, we needed to do that part, and we knew that this concert was coming up, and... Um, well, Candace tried really hard to write a duet part for several, several weeks, and it just wouldn't come. And sometimes when you're a creative person, you really can't do anything but just trust the process because it just won't come any other way. And uh, so <laughs> I just got this duet part four days ago. Isn't that great? So she dropped it in my text messages on Monday night. I woke up, rolled over. I never wake up. I never have my phone next to me. I did that night. Rolled over at 2.30 in the morning. There it is. King of the Fairies duet. And I was like, all right. I'm going to wake up Tuesday morning bright and early, and I'm going to learn that sucker. So it's funny because over the last few days, my mom said, well, first she said, you're not learning that for Sunday, are you? No, Mom, definitely not. <laughs> oh, Sophie, don't say anything. It was very awkward for a minute. And then finally on Friday night, uh, or Friday afternoon, Mom said, you know, I think that's my favorite part of your whole program. Yes! <laughs> Score. So we're going to be playing you the King of the Fairies, just a very fun piece. And um, if I mess it up, you know why. I only had four days to learn it. So enjoy.
too bad for four days practice, I guess. <laughs> the great part about that one is really just how fun it is. And we love to have fun when we're practicing. Um, I do need to give another shout out to this girl over here. Uh, because of school schedules this year and just the insanity of life, we don't have as much time to practice as we would truly genuinely love to have. And so she has been getting up and hurrying through getting ready for school so that we can have just 15 minutes together before school. Kind of sets the tone for the day in a way. And when we get to play songs like that, then you're going to have an awesome day. So shout out to Sophia for um, dealing with all the crazy, getting up early to practice. It's also hard to kind of get going to practice at 730 in the morning, but she nails it every morning. All right. Um, I've got two more before another duet, and um, she's just going to stay up here. This next set of tunes is a very, very special set to me. A lot of you know that I produced an album a year ago, and some of you know the story behind it. Some of you don't. Maybe I ought to write a book. I've been told that I should. I see you back there, Tawika. And... Um, I don't know. There is something. There is some. There is a desire in me to write a book. Maybe I need a podcast. I like to talk. I don't know. Something. But the story that was woven into that album entitled The Dawning of the Day was just very special. And um, the man who recorded that album is sitting here today. I didn't think he would be here, but I'm thrilled that Dave is here. Um, he poured countless hours into making that project the special one that it was. And um, the dawning of the day, just that phrase, means a lot to me. Again, don't take your life for granted. You never know. You truly don't. Your season that you're in now, it could be your last one. Now, it might be a long season. I don't know. But it could be your last one. What would happen if, if that were the end? Did you wake up every morning grateful for the dawning of the day? When I was very, very sick a few years ago, um, one of the tunes that kind of started to help heal my insides a little bit was this piece. It's the reason, part of the reason, that that album came to be was this piece. The dawning of the day. What an inspirational phrase. I love it. So I'm going to be playing you a track from my album. There are albums in the back. Here's my tiny little plug for my album. Um, pick one up or 10. They make great, great gifts. And um, you can also find my music online. It is a little bit difficult right now just because you have to have the Bandcamp app. Um, but fingers crossed that it will be on Apple Music before long. So stay tuned for that update as well. There's surprise number two for the day. Um, the dawning of the day into Lord Lovett's Lament.
You ready for surprise number three? I am. I've been ready for this for a while. My parents don't know about this one either. <sighs> you wonder how many other secrets I'm holding on to? <laughs> so the next set of tunes is another um, set of Celtic tunes. Uh, these are Scottish, yes. These are Scottish. And two of my very favorite ones. And Hector the Hero is, was written as a tribute to some military guy. I don't know how long ago, but it was for the military. Uh, the Brolem is a very special piece to me because my teacher arranged both of these as well. And she arranged the Brolem um, in a very special way and for a, a special person. And um, this piece actually was um, on my radar for a very long time before I finally got to learn it. So I'm thrilled to play the Brolem for you today, which is a Scottish dance, and since we've been talking about dancing and there's a title on the top of your page that says a time to dance, and since our harps are now fully electroacoustic, which makes recording a lot easier, I am working on my second album, um, which will come out, I don't know when. I'm a creative person, so we'll see when the inspiration comes through to finish um, really what's in my mind. But a time to dance as an album is in the works, and I will be thrilled to share with you all that comes from that journey. The first album I put out had to be kept a secret. This one, it's a time to dance, and it's a time to sing and to laugh and to have joy in our hearts. And so I'm going to be talking a lot about that on social media, of course, so follow along with that crazy journey because I'm sure it will be nuts. <laughs> hot. <laughs> All the energy output for that one. Um, we've got just a couple more things for you today. I do still have two more surprises for you. Um, 
God is just amazing. You know what? He blows me away every single day. He just does. He uses you a lot of times to blow me away. Just the conversations I've had in the last six weeks, I've talked to some of you about those conversations. They're blowing my mind. I literally don't know what to do when I get done with them. They're just so of God. And I hope and pray that he can use those. I don't know when, but I hope and pray that he can and will and is using those conversations and those bits of inspiration even to feed some of you all here today. So, we have another set of dances for you. Um, Sophie, are you ready for this? So these two pieces, tango and seguidilla, these are very dancey. Um, Carlos Salzedo wrote them, um, and he is one of the most famous harpists of all time. He uh, wrote a ton of music for the harp. He's kind of off the wall, makes his music really fun to play, and um, we are thrilled to give you these two as a duet. And then after that, we technically are done, but if you look in your program and you clap a little extra long, we might play one more for you. Thank you. 
All right, twist our arms. We'll play one more. <laughs> I said earlier that King of the Fairies was our favorite, but it sure is a toss-up between that one and this one. If you'll notice, I just wrote Encore in your program because I really didn't want you to know what it was. Um, we've been talking a little bit about today, seasons, life, the gift. Oh, the gift that life is. Every single day is a gift. We've been talking about dancing in our rhythms. Sometimes our rhythm feels whoa, completely off. Sometimes you feel like you're in a waltz, right? It's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. It's easy to learn. You know what you're doing. And then sometimes you get thrown out in the middle of the floor at a disco ball and you don't have the moves to make it happen. You know what I mean? You just can't pull it together and you don't know what to do. But God knows what he's doing. Isn't that comforting how you can know that? So <laughs> there have been a lot of different rhythms in my life this last year, and um, we're going to play you this piece and then stick around for a couple more minutes. Just give me two more minutes. Um, I do have one final surprise. It was a surprise to me, a very big surprise. I had no idea. Um, but God is a God of surprises, I think, and um, I'm, I'm blessed. I truly am. So we're going to play you this piece, and I dedicated it to two people who— truly <laughs> describe, um, I guess, what this piece is. Sometimes you meet people in life who are just entertaining. They just are. You just love to be around them. They sparkle, and you just, you just love it. And these two, Jim and James, this one's for them. Neither one of them could be here today. Um, I hate that but they, I think, are watching the live stream right now or later, and um, I hope that they enjoy this. This is a ragtime piece, Scott Joplin's The Entertainer, and we hope that we have given you a little bit of entertainment today as well as glorifying God, of course, um, but this is The Entertainer.
Okay, here's the part that shocked me. <laughs> it's gonna shock some of you, I'm sure. Uh, there's a few people in here who know what's going on. There's a few people on the live stream that know what's going on, but not very many. And I already knocked two elephants out of the room. I'm not getting married and I'm not quitting Plaza, so what else could it be? Well, I'm gonna read this to you. I had absolutely zero intention of making an announcement like this until just a few short weeks ago. You know those seasons we've talked about? All of that was in my head before this incident happened. It turns out that God was using all of those points of inspiration to prepare my heart for a slightly different season in my own life stance. I mentioned earlier this week that it marks the anniversary of a very special date in my life, my Harper anniversary, 16 years. Those 16 years have been the sweetest years of my life. God led me to a door two months ago that made no sense to me, a special door, one that I had thought about for years, but never really thought the door would open. A sweet 16 of an anniversary kind of deserves a special little something something, don't you think? Um, we kind of make it a tradition. She does not live locally, um, but we make it a tradition to either eat cake or ice cream on that day together, um, even though we're miles apart, because you always need an excuse to eat cookies or ice cream or cake. And um, on Wednesday, I will be opening up a new LLC for those of you who don't know, that's a new business. Um, in addition to Sharon Valley Harp, I will now be the proud owner of a second business entitled Sharon Valley Sweets. And that means cookies on cookies on cookies for everyone. No, I'm not opening a storefront, but I will be opening up a cottage bakery run out of the place that I love most, my home. And I'm not home very much, but when I am there, it is the sweetest place on this planet. So today I need to do this very quickly because I know you need to go, but I do need to dedicate this business today because I have you all here, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> I won't go into the whole story. It would take me an hour and a half to tell you the story, the God story of where that door came from. But there were some people who walked into my life unexpectedly, and God used them to push me through this door. No, it doesn't make any sense. I have no time in my day as it is. I play the harp, I go to Plaza and make dough and sauce and make your guys' dinner, and then I go home and play the harp again. You know, it's, there's no time. But for some reason, I am being literally pushed through this door. So I'm walking through it. And um, today I want to dedicate this business to Jim. Um, he was one of the first ones to kind of say, hey, you, your cookies are really good. You really need to do something with this. And then I had another person, and his name was James, and he said the same thing. And I was like, this is kind of strange. And then I had a couple in my life, Candace and Ben. Candace and Ben have eaten my cookies for years, um, literally 16 years and have always talked about it. Maybe it's their fault that this is happening. And then, finally and most importantly to my parents, um, <laughs> my dad has always been a very willing taste tester, if you know what I mean. <laughs> if there's something vacant in the house, he's like, oh, who's that for? Sorry, dad, this one's not for you, but you can have a taste if you want. I appreciate his hard work over the years, how he has uh, led our family with a joyful heart. Um, he's never once complained. Never. He has eight children. He provided for all of us in ways that I cannot even get into up here today. So this one's for you, Dad, for being my taste tester. And then this is also for you, Mom, because you instilled in me my love of baking in the first place. You were the one who put me in the kitchen when I was six, seven years old and said, this is how you make good cookies. And so really, it's out of her heart coming through mine that I'm going to open this business. Um, it is a cottage bakery. There's some rules and stuff with that. I will be online tomorrow. Um, there are business cards downstairs next to a big tray of cookies. Now, I did not bake all the cookies downstairs. The ladies of this church helped in so many ways, and I so appreciate it. But please do me a favor. Pick up one of those cards. Call me up for a chit-chat and say, hey, I also want three dozen cookies, and we'll get you set up. So 
Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart and from Sophia and from Rick for being here today. This has just been incredible to see you all, to see your faces, to see the light come into them. I oh, just love it. There's, no, there's nothing better than that. So there's a reception downstairs. Go get a CD before you go downstairs. But um, I've got a couple people that I need to come forward when we're done. That's you, Julie, um, and you, Tamika. Um, I need you guys to come up front so I can get some pictures. But the rest of you, please, 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 go downstairs as quick as you can so that I can meet you down there as quick as I can. We can get pictures, any cookies, and it'll be wonderful. Thank you for being here.